Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. We're watching stocks in the tech category continue to ramp up. Software business braze up 18%, bringing its year-to-date gain to 55%. After reporting earnings, it came ahead of the bottom line expectations and the top line. The chief financial officer, Isabel Winkles, joins us from Braze, ticker BRZE. Isabel, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, tell us about the major highlights from your guys' earnings. As obviously, the street is very happy this morning. Yeah, we're really happy with uh, our results here in the first quarter of uh, 2024, of fiscal year 2024 for Braze. Uh, we achieved revenues of $101.8 million, that's a 31% year-over-year growth rate. Um, and we made meaningful progress on our path to profitability across the PL. Our gross margin up 100 basis points to 68.8% year-over-year and over 700 basis points in non-GAAP operating gross margin expansion over a year ago. Um, so we've made meaningful progress across the PL, uh, meaningful customer expansion, 96 uh, net new customers in the quarter, up from only adding 55 in the prior quarter. Uh, so we're really excited for our results here in the first quarter. We also just closed our acquisition of Northstar, which we announced on June 1st. Uh, and so we're excited for that prospect as well. The, uh, I want to get back to that in a moment. Uh, as far as the numbers go in the margin, it sounds like that's the main highlight here as you're still operating at a loss, a gap and adjusted, but narrowing compared to a year ago. So uh, getting that to break even, is that the priority right now? Yeah, and actually we made comments about that in our fourth quarter announced call uh, that we had declared our path to profitability by the fourth quarter of next fiscal year. Um, and so we went public in November of 2021, raised about a half a billion dollars, and we said very clearly that uh, fiscal year 23, so calendar 22, was gonna be a big investment year for us. And it was, and you saw that reflected in the evolution of our profitability metrics. We added um, a lot of great resources across the organization. Uh, we think we were appropriately uh, resourced for the current macroeconomic environment. And so now we are uh, increasing our, our discipline here on spend across the organization. That is true both for headcount and other things such as uh, t and &E. Okay, so uh, to just uh, hone in on that for a second here, the cost cutting um, uh, elements that um, have been prioritized here, how do they differ going forward? What you've already done versus what you're going to do next? How much more low hanging fruit is there to cut costs? Yeah, so I think we're just going to maintain a disciplined posture when it comes to investment strategy. Um, we are forcing our leaders to make um, trade-offs internally in deciding how to prioritize spend. So it's not really so much about cost cutting as it is about prioritizing the deployment. You can actually see uh, our general overall costs are continuing to go up. Um, and, and that will, will continue, but we are looking to have the pace of that increase uh, obviously be less than our top line growth in order to continue to, to make good on, on the promise that we made that we would be profitable by the fourth quarter of next year. Got it. Okay, so just going to uh, count on the, the growth to get you there. Uh, acceleration of the top line, then, I would assume, um, or based on the last couple years, where does the overall top line growth rate go? As, as long as it's above your cost growth rate, then you work your way back towards that profitability. But as traders, when we look at the earnings every quarter, should we be expecting an acceleration of growth or stability of top line sales? Yeah, so we're really looking at the macroeconomic environment currently, and what's embedded in our current guidance assumption is effectively a persistence of the current macro climate. Um, what we have seen is, uh, in, over the last several quarters, there's been uh, evolutionary disruption that has sort of made things sort of worse and worse. Um, we're starting to see a bit of a stabilization. So I'm not gonna call for any kind of acceleration, okay. um, but a stabilization, we're seeing a stabilization in the market environment. Okay, and um, the North Star acquisition is, uh, as I understand, a, basically a regional play, right? They have uh, uh, Australian focus? That's exactly right. They are exclusive reseller in the Australia, New Zealand region. Uh, we've had a long time uh, exclusive bi-directional relationship, so they only sell Braze and we only sell in those markets through North Star. Um, so this has been a long time in, in the making, I think, uh, given this relationship. Um, it is unique. We do have uh, resellers in other regions of the world. Um, we're not necessarily looking to make a similar play in other parts of, of the world, um, but we thought this was the right time 
uh, to bring them in-house and just to realize some of the synergies that are going to be associated with making these North Star employees full-fledged Braves employees. And we're really thrilled to welcome them to the family as of, as of June 1st. Okay. The uh, Braves uh, uh, market here, of course, is customer engagement. Um, it's uh, communication with customers about what a, a company's brand is, right? Some of the, uh, a lot of household names you guys are connected with that you represent. Is there an ability to weave in, you know, language models into the communication? Of course, right now the uh, hype train is full steam on AI. Is that something that you guys can embrace, will, or does it affect your business at all? Yeah, so actually we have embraced AI um, over the course of our product roadmap. Um, so we all have had um, AI driven features uh, and, and premium add-ons within the product um, over the last few years. More recently, we've developed integrations with both GPT-4 and Dolly for generative content, both in text and imaging. And really for us, the objective with AI is to help smooth the on-ramp, make it easier for small but mighty marketing teams to do more and to bring um, really the most sophisticated marketing campaigns to life uh, both with our smaller organizations and then some of our largest uh, and most sophisticated multinationals. All right, uh, Isabel, thanks uh, uh, for the rundown here, the fundamentals and the specifics on the timeline uh, for the profitability and the way you get there. Uh, appreciate those details. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Isabel Winkles, Chief Financial Officer at Braze. BRZE up big this morning.